Okay, so quick little update. I've been applying heat to a knife and uh, was warming up the wood a little bit to see if I could make any headway. And so what I did was went ahead and boiled some water in my little tea kettle. And uh, I just went ahead and applied this water to this joint. It seemed a little less intrusive. And uh, I can tell already I need to put something underneath here so water doesn't get on my rice pillow. But uh, as soon as I applied this water to this back joint, you can see it turning the glue. It looks like it's cut that had been in there. Finally started relaxing, and as soon as I stuck that knife in there, and the knife wasn't even hot. All of a sudden, it started releasing. I'm doing the wrong side, oh my gosh. It's all right, that all needs to be done, but we'll go back to this one. Here we go. I can see a spot where I can get under there now. The edges are so, I mean, this thing's been played for probably 60 years. So watching it, yeah, it just turns it to, like a, I can't tell if this is wood glue. You can see how it maybe turns it kind of whitish, milky. And so I just keep applying the hot glue all over the hot water all around it. Just keep warming it up and see what happens. Pop it underneath. As soon as I put this underneath here, the hot knife definitely helps. Yeah, you can hear it starting to, I'm gonna pop loose. And I gotta, I'm trying to be slow and careful. And, oh gosh, yeah. That was like, that's like night and day difference. That was better than any. Whoa, too fast. Still okay. Wow. See, I've never played around with hot glue, with hide glue before. I know this end block's gonna be a, Pain in, the, pain in the butt, but it definitely loosened it all up. I have a feeling somebody put something other than high glue on here. The way that it's oozing out of this joint. I already, already worked up, to, oh my gosh. Yeah, the hot water's a secret. Oh my gosh. Yeah, okay, so I'm at this first corner block. Uh, the pegboards come loose. And I gotta be careful because I do have some cuts on here. I'm still not happy with this, uh, still need to be able to get this end. Peg, uh, I should have taken the sound peg out. That was the lesson learned. Forgot to take the sound peg out. That's an amateur move. See it, where's it at? Still looking for it. There it is. Okay. That's not going to come out so easy. That's fine. So anyways, just an update. I'm going to keep applying some hot water. See what happens. Come away with me across the emerald sea. Come away with me to be, to be. Come away with me across the emerald sea. Come away with me to be.
so basically, it turns this glue has been turning into a. Uh, go down here and look. There we go. It just turns it into a wet, goopy mess, and I can't. You can't put it on linen because it picks or anything like that. You can't. Don't want to put it on anything lint, where it'll pick it up. I just keep cleaning it off, and uh, yeah. So, I mean, I'm almost three millimeters in. Still have like 27 more to go. Slow, slow, slow. I like this. I took an artist tool. It's got the uh, painter's knife. It comes out with an edge, and so I just cut that off, filed it down, blunted the edge so it wouldn't cut wood. Well, it'll cut it, but not as much or less likely. And just keep working. And I like the, the turn. I've seen a lot of people have these uh, like straight knives. That seems crazy to me. And then the other thing you might notice is I, I have this, uh, I'll show you probably in a different picture and talk about it in a little bit, but so I made uh, from another website and I'll list the in the appropriate video uh, how to make a rice, I made a rice pillow so I can keep my work, the violin, safe on a malleable surface. It gives me a lot more flexibility to work with it, and I feel a lot less anxiety in terms about hurting the instrument. I mean, this thing's already, I've already snapped the seal, like, up through the first turn. Yeah, it's going to go, but I don't want to do it without assisting it with some heat or some water. This tailpiece though, whoo! The top was, man, this stuff, I just makes me wonder if they ever glued it with something else. So, I'm gonna keep doing what I'm doing and then I will check in with you later. Okay. Come to a very interesting part. I made my way all the way around it. Um, I didn't see anything that I specifically messed up and what I noticed was right when I got to the end here All I had to do was just again use This knife artist knife a little bit of hot water Put it on the top It loosened it just enough and this is my uh, great big reveal I'm taking the top off for the first time in probably 75 years Wow and from what I can tell, the only damage that's been done was just a very, very small piece of wood right about there. Came out. You can see it's been a victim of some mold. So let's just see if I can get, just pay attention with my glasses. So. I have never done that before. And uh curious the cracks that are on top don't go all the way through. Oh that's nice. Yeah. The cracks that I think I've showed you probably seen plenty of pictures, these cracks that go all the way up there. They do not reflect underneath they do not display are exposed on the underbelly. <laughs> I'm gonna take some time to admire this, that's for certain. I'm not certain, it looks like there's been water damage. Probably to the detriment of the, uh, to the bottom piece. And there's a lot of excess glue here on the sides. I'm kind of surprised. There's a whole like, I'm not certain why that comes in so far. It wasn't really necessary and I don't see anything in there that would indicate that was necessary. I'm gonna set this down for a moment. 
It's kind of hard because I don't, I only wear these glasses for close up work. So, uh, got my sound post that I dorked up, forgot to take out before I started my work, but that's fine. You can see the little knife cut in there with the original. I don't know if it was the Wolkanowski that did this. Let's just set that aside. I'm just going to do a, uh, bring the camera over. Let's see what we got here. So, this is weird. So somebody puts paper in here. I guess to keep the tail pin from moving around. And, interesting, they created a mortise for the uh, lining. I haven't seen that on... When I was looking on videos, I haven't seen it. And you can see the water. That's why it's cracked. Somehow water got in here, expanded it, and then that's why my crack on the outside, that's why that crack is exposed. And uh, some other things that I see that are different than what I've been watching on YouTube is this corner block. I can't tell if that's another piece. So that's kind of really weird. Normally the corner blocks, you know, they cut them to like with about right about there. Pair them down and then you do your mortise in there. And yeah, so they just bring it up there to the edge. Huh, so this is definitely a different, different design. The top block looks like it's in pretty good shape. I didn't, you know, I didn't see any mouse. Any mouse, uh, any evidence of mouse chewing or nesting or anything like that. Obviously the hole's pretty small. But yeah, you can just tell there's, this stuff all has to be cleaned up. Good golly. So, uh, I'm thinking the worst case scenario, I gotta replace that end block. The inside is just immaculately smooth. I mean, just super smooth. You can see the, uh, let's see here, is this dual body? Is this a dual bookcase? No, this is all one piece. And the, uh, it's interesting to see the grain patterns down here. Okay. So. Dun, 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 dun. So I'm really happy with the uh, result here. First violin. Tear down number 1436. The uh, tailpiece matches 1436. Still has the graphite on there. And then the uh, original sound. I can't tell if this is the original sound pen. I would have no way of knowing. I'm not that good. I don't know if anybody's that good. They have a little line marked, a couple lines marked. That's interesting. We'll see what that means. Sure, there's a reason for that. And the top looks like it's in really good shape. Now the sound post, you can see it's been installed. It's been set a couple times. And uh, yeah. And there's this is the damage <sighs> right there at the tailpiece. Let me see, is that getting focus? No focus there, baby. So you can see, yeah, the black and the mold and the mildew. And I'm going to try to tackle that. I don't want to take this tailpiece off or the saddle off, but I think I'm going to have to. I'll probably just make a new one in the same vein. So that's great news. I was really thinking I was going to have to put cleats in here and all kinds of stuff. Unless it's, no, the crack is to the left. Well, my left, your right, it's probably a good mm, four or five millimeters over. So I don't even know why they did that. They could have just used, they could have done a different, they could have done something different. Same thing with these little cracks up here. And that just might be as much as just a little bit of, the glue's already in there. So I'm thinking I'm just going to be scraping this getting this polish off and then uh, figuring out how we're going to re 
Revarnish it. Now, it's interesting. I, I wouldn't have guessed this, but the top piece, the top body, this is different than the, uh, it has a different color. I'm guessing that they must have, uh, looks like it's painted after the fact, but very strange. And I'm not certain why, but there's like a little bitty, 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 bitty hole. Let's see if I can get it right there. Is that it? Yep. No. Just right above it. Little bitty, bitty, bitty hole. And it doesn't go all the way through. I thought maybe somebody used it for, you know, to, to try to set the, I don't know, idea. No idea. But it's, uh, I think the top plate looks like it's in pretty good condition. Just needs to be cleaned up, needs to be stripped, revarnished, see what happens. Oh man, I'm loving this. I can't wait to show my grandmother and my mom, my dad, anyone else in the family that wants to watch. Yeah, I'm loving it. It's been in here for so long. Yeah, you can see the sound posts. Come on, adjust, there we go. And so one of the things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take up, I have some watercolor paper and I am going to trace the outline. I am then going to take all of my measurements. I want to see how thick it is all the way across. Actually, that's interesting. There's a little crack there that I, how did I not see that? Uh, it's just a little one. Yeah, they used some shitty, sorry, they used some cruddy glue in there. Hmm. And then, uh, yeah, I'm gonna see what I can do. So I figured I'd measure everything, take the heights, document it. Same thing with the base bar. See how they did it. See a couple marks where the uh, original worksman cut into the wood just a fract, a little bit. So, so far, I'm loving it. This, this bottom, this bottom block is uh, dislodged. It's going to be super easy to come off. And my goal is, I can't quite tell. Uh, and actually, they've trimmed that up. I measured the finger plate, and it's 22 millimeters at the top. It was uh, about 39 and a half at the bottom here. Uh, I believe, I, th I thought I saw that it was, I, got, I had to check my measurements. I thought it was 24 and 40 was what your target is. And the nut, I'm gonna, I feel like I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to replace the, action looks okay on like the A string and the E string. <clears throat> the G string is pretty much the same height as the, fingerboard so yeah I'm gonna have to replace that most likely so I'll probably just buy those I'm really trying to figure out whether or not I, I hmm, you know it, it's kinda like do I do it do I not do it I have a feeling that I'm probably gonna need to replace this back block and we'll see what happens so anyways enough chit chat and I got some work to do and uh, I will catch up with you all soon enough thanks
Ooh stuff has a lot. Definitely don't want to be breathing this stuff. It's making progress pretty, pretty well. There's probably a Vahaluthi or somewhere that's probably crying because of the way I'm doing this. Hopefully, you can tell that wood is aged. It looks good. I was actually able to almost get rid of this entire line where it looks like the cracks were but uh yeah let's just keep going and see what happens god it was such a mess someone put something on here that i don't think belongs you can't even now you can see the the purfling where you couldn't see it before. It's gonna be interesting when I clean it up just a little bit more to see exactly how, uh, how it was installed, but. All right, cool, another checkup. I'm gonna keep at it. Okay, so it's been about another, looks like about another hour and a half, two hours starting to work on cleaning up the top plate. Pretty happy with it. I basically, the, the varnish or the top coat is super, super brittle, which I'm sure is what it's supposed to be since it's uh, supposed to help the tonal quality, I guess. Um, but anyway, so yeah, these scrapers, I did a couple of different uh, varieties. One, I just tried to scrape off, you know, just the smallest amount, just like, you know, just to get it down. And then I went back and did um, just a little bit of pressure. I'm not seeing it take any wood away with it. So it's, uh, yeah, it's cleaning up pretty nice. And then I'm gonna keep working on this throughout the day. And then, uh, yeah, we'll see what we got. I created a heck of a mess. So it's all over the place. Uh, these little, Scrapers, they're in, indispensable, that's for certain. I have to keep sharpening them or cleaning up the edges. And it works really great. So, uh, yeah, that's my check-in and uh, we'll keep going. Hopefully I'll be able to finish this plate sometime today. Okay, woo! All right, so I'm about, uh, how far am I into this? Okay, let's redo that. Woo, got some bright light. So it's now three o'clock. I started at about 10.30. I got the plate completely de-varnished or whatever they call it. I can't quite tell exactly what's going on with some of the wood. There's like some white patches, some light patches. And so just to take a break from the top, give myself a moment here. I can see I gotta put some cleats in there. Now that I got some good light, I can kind of see what's going on with this crack. And uh, yeah, I'm gonna put some cleats in a couple of places here. This harsh light and you know, this, this light, I can definitely see a little bit more of what's going on underneath there. I gotta make sure I just myself next time. So right now I'm just kind of working on the edges a little bit, making sure I get all the varnish off. Uh, yeah, it looks pretty, I think. Not too bad. And then, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep working on it. Tomorrow I'll probably start working on the cleats and see what happens. Meanwhile, let's get back to work. Okay, so I have the, uh, what is that, 3 o'clock? The 3.30 sun here coming in, pretty bright. I've got the bottom cleaned up. Feels pretty good, pretty well cleaned up, and then you can see now it's like, it's some pretty tiger maple. 
Underneath, I think that's what it's called, or flame maple, whatever it is. Underneath, it's coming off pretty much just like the top. What's interesting is the um, the finish. It feels like there's an original sealer finish that it's just this stuff just doesn't stick to you really. It actually just breaks off. It's real brittle, and this doesn't feel like wood. It feels like tr like some sort of stained, at least one layer of color. It makes me want to. Uh, See if I can get some pictures of the violin before, uh, like if I can get some pictures of the violin before I actually got my hands on it, maybe back in the day. I'll see you and ask around, but yeah, everything else looks good. There's a little damage that occurred because of the water damage, and uh, I'll talk about that in a little bit. But right now, I'm going to get back to work on uh, doing some stripping. Okay, day two, I have done quite a bit of work. Yesterday I spent about six hours, seven hours working on the violin. And I got some pretty, I made some really good progress. I'm pretty happy with it. I got the, uh, the plate done. And then I used a U-shaped caliper to, man, to measure all the markings. I drew an outline of the top plate and then I just marked everything out so that way I didn't have to mess with it later. And I kind of have an idea for uh, maybe future templates. We'll see how compared to other ones and see how it plays out. I can tell there are definitely some differences. And then for the bottom plate, <clears throat> excuse me, for the ribs, I went ahead and cleaned the ribs. Uh, I'm pretty happy with it. I basically just got the glue off. I mean, this is how much I took off. Just as least amount as possible. Thought I'd collect those. Now that's probably about two thirds. A third probably got on the pillow. Uh, my rice pillow, which I don't know if I talked about. I actually made this. Just sewed it up. Put about put a bunch of rice in there. Oh, it was all good. Worked perfect, exactly like I wanted, nice little bed. Uh, so then what I did was I took a piece of paper, measured the width of the uh, neck, slid it on, like so. And then I put a little piece of tape right there so that I kept it centered with my center line. And then I traced the outline. So this is the outline of the rib. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the outside, get all the dimensions, and then I think the only thing I really want to do is, I feel like there's just a little bit of a raise. So remember there's water damage that was down here, and this was all black, and you can still see the black still exist in there. So it doesn't look, I mean this is old, the water damage was old, so I would have, I can't tell if that's mildew or mold. It doesn't look like it's gotten any worse, but I definitely want to try to get rid of it as much as possible. So I'm debating on whether or not to cut out this black and just fill it with dust and glue, or just take off the block entirely and clean it up, which I think is what I'm going to have to do because of this water crack, because of the expansion. I feel like I want to put, I don't even, if the crack doesn't go all the way through, it's just, it's just, it's just water damage. I don't know how it's, I can probably scrape it and smooth it out, but the it definitely needs to come back in. It's too far out. So I kind of feel like I probably need to, well, we'll see. I just, I don't know yet. There's a lot of work and a lot of considerations to go on. I mean, you can feel the chips and the fact that the, the back is so flush. We're talking, I mean, you know, thousandths of an inch, I have no idea. It's almost flush in some places, so I feel like I need to, I'm definitely gonna take the back off without the top on after I get my measurements. So that way I can make sure that if the ribs spring at all, I can at least maybe clamp them back to within a fraction 
and get it. I mean, the top looks fine, but I feel like the back is going to need to be pulled in a little bit. And uh, we'll see how that works out. We'll see how that works out. But then uh, now I'm going to take the top off. I mean, excuse me, I'm going to take the back off. And then I'm going to do my inside traces and then start taking, uh, I'm going to call them making templates of the corner blocks. And what's interesting, he did it a little differently. Uh, you've probably seen pictures, but so the corner blocks actually are really long. You know, when I was looking at corner blocks, you know, they would stop at least, you know, we're talking halfway, half of that distance. And then the, bind, the linings would come up closer to it, further along. So this is a different design than what I've seen before. And in terms of the ribs, the ribs all look good. The only thing I can see is there's a couple places where there's some gaps. There's like a little gap right in there. Probably just a, maybe just a little bit of glue just to sure it up so there's no, everything's solid. There's a little place maybe right in here that needs to be just a little bit of glue as well. I figured out, and I'm going to measure it, but the, uh, the nut is, I mean, yeah, it's just, it's got to be replaced. The E string and the G string basically are residing, or as low as the fretboard. Uh, fretboard, you can tell I play the guitar. Uh, the fingerboard. So that's got to come off and get replaced. The saddle on the other one, <clears throat> I'm hesitant to take it off. I don't know if I don't think I really need to since it's already the original. It's kind of like why bother? So I'm going to leave that uh, alone for now. I will take the nut off here, take the back off. <clears throat> uh, the, the top block looks fine. Oh, the other thing that was interesting. So, and I haven't seen this on other ones and other videos. In the each of the blocks, they've cut the corners back. So that the linings, it might be easier to see here. So that the linings can cut, uh, can go behind it. Let's see here, here we go. Which I thought was kind of interesting. Online, all the other makers that I've seen, you know, they just keep them square. I don't see this, uh, uh, there's a name for it. I gotta think of what that cut is. Anyways, the cutback is the sh proximate shape of what they wanted the linings, but they cut it back a little bit more. So that lets me, I'm just guessing that the lining goes back at least, it looks like here about a millimeter. Let's see, how far does it go back? It goes back, no, I'm out of my mind. What do we got here? Three and a half millimeters there. This one I can barely see the edge, let's see here. Yeah, about three and a half. And the top here is recessed about, yeah, they're all about three and a half millimeters recessed. I mean, in this, you know, this block from, corner block from end to end is, you know, I realize I'm going at an angle, but even still, the, this hypotenuse would be like about 34 on that side. Let's just see what, yeah, 34 on this side. This is smaller. Let's see what we got here. Where's my little, there we go. 31, and this is, actually, they're so close. That one's 31, it's 31, 30, almost 32. So, consistent, really good craftsmanship from what I can tell, at least in that accuracy, whoever did this part of it. <clears throat> Assuming it was the original maker. Um, another thing that is really interesting about this, and I, this is part of the reason why I wanted to preserve the tail block, is there's a piece of newspaper <laughs> that's in there, which I, which I'm kind of curious why that is. The newspaper goes all the way into the back. Let's see if I can get you this focus here. So. A little more. There we go. There we go. So the paper actually goes all the way to the rib, and I can see the newspaper. There's like some sort of. I can see the ink, and the tail. And the only thing I can think of is that somebody they 
they must have put, they must have made it too big. And that was their way of fixing it, was just gluing paper in there. I was really tempted just to, uh, just take off and replace this block and then take this piece of paper out and see what's in it. But I think as long as it, I mean, it worked fine. It held the tailpiece just fine. So I don't think it's necessary. So yeah, I'm going to go ahead and start doing all my measurements and then uh, catch you up after I take off the top plate. Maybe do some uh, time lapse and see what happens here. So let's get to it. <laughs> 